All right, good evening. Let's all stand and sing. Who's ready? All right, good. Here we go. I need you more 
sufficiency. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you give us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be made partakers of your divine nature. Thank you, Jesus. We need you more and more, Lord. Search the world for a love that. 
became a curse for us. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus. Unto you who believe, he is precious. Thank you, Lord, our precious Redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you bless this time together and speak to us through your precious words. All right, good evening. How are you doing? Awesome to be with you tonight. Uh, we have a need uh, in the nursery. Uh, if you'd like to help watch some wonderful children, they're waiting for you, you know, all right? And, uh, you know, I don't think you have to be a wheel wheelbarrow or a horse or anything like that, but, uh, you know, you can enjoy uh, the children. So they need nursery help if you could uh, go down there if you want to volunteer for this evening. Uh, a couple of other announcements to remind you about this Friday. We'll hear more about this uh, during the service is the uh, Bible College kickoff evening. That'll be at uh, 6 o'clock here in the chapel. Uh, that'll be a night to celebrate the beginning of the semester. The semester actually begins a week from tomorrow. All right, a week from tomorrow. And uh, register tonight because the late fees kick in tomorrow. So, uh, all right, so that'll be uh, MBCNS kickoff will be Friday evening. And the next Saturday evening will be our church picnic uh, at Rocky Point State Park, Beach and State Park. Please don't drive north to Rock State Park. It's a wonderful place, but it ain't going to be where we are. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so go to Rocky Point State Park off of Back River Neck Road in, uh, in beautiful Middle River, Middle River, Essex. All right. So parking is free, but you've got to tell people that you're with us. So it's one of those things you get a benefit for saying, I'm with greater grace. So that happens at 12 to 4 next uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, actually, uh, at Rocky Point Beach and Park. That's our church picnic. All right. Anyone here for the very first time today? Anyone here for the first time with us tonight? Anyone? No? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. We have something uh, for you at the Welcome Center on your way out. Thank you. And now will you welcome... Fresh from Camp Life, yeah, he's still awake, uh, Pastor Pete Westera. Hello, everybody. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? <laughs> uh, yeah, we just got back, um, and we had a great week. We really did. I was, I was so happy uh, driving home, talking with my wife, and thankful to God, and, you know, uh, just a beautiful time. Um, we, Pastor Gary Grunwald preached to us Sunday morning last week, really helped us put some thoughts in our hearts, and uh, with those thoughts, we went to camp, and he said, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most beautiful things to see is watching the body, you know, uh, pick up their cross or watching their body, the body lay down their life. And all week I was thinking about that. It was really like that. Um, there was 87 um, staff members up there working very, very hard. And uh, not all of it is fun, you know. Um, usually you're sleep deprived and all, all kinds of th other problems. But, you know, you they were doing it, they were doing it. I had, uh, we have these radios, so maybe 18 of us, I don't know, have radios, so. And all week I was hearing someone would call, hey, can, can someone grab this? And then somebody would, on the other side of the, of the campus would say, I'll get it. And then somebody would go, hey, I need this. And then someone says, I'm coming, I'll get it for you. And then someone else would, all day long, this, this was how it was, you know, like, all you had to do is hint that you need help or, uh, you know, that you, you know, you're overwhelmed with something. And just the entire conversation over the radio was so edifying to me because people were so eager to help us and help everybody and help each other and lay down their lives. And so I'm just, uh, you know, I know enough. I've been around enough to know when, when we have unity and when we don't. And. I would have to say that this is probably one of my be greatest experiences of unity that we've had in such a, with such a large team. So, uh, which is not easy to do, 
you know, especially under stress, sleep deprived, under pressure. But uh, I think God helped us, and we, we went with the right heart. And, um, you know, I'm just proud of the staff. I really am. Amazing people. Amazing to see, honestly. I, I could tell, I could talk to you for hours about little things. You know, these little things that you need at camp that somebody has, that gift or that ability, you know, that I, I don't have in a million years, you know. But this person has it, you know, and there he is, and he's doing it, you know. So it just comes together beautifully. So, uh, we, you know, we don't operate with heroes. There's not one or two or five people that do everything. Um, it's just honestly a lot of people doing lots of little things. So that was a great blessing to me to watch. I was, I was thoroughly enjoying that and very thankful for that. And some of those staff members are here, so I wish I could name names, but it doesn't work. It just backfires because you're going to forget people. So anyone that has the camp life look, just thank them for me. <laughs> kind of like, like this one. Uh, we, uh, we did have some beautiful moments also, I think. Um, first of all, Pastor Jason came to camp. Yeah. And uh, actually, he, he thrived. He thrived. He was, every day he was smiling. I, we were a little worried about him in the beginning, but he did wonderful. He just did wonderful. I uh, loved it. Actually, I think he's quitting the uh, in-reach department. He's, he's going to join youth ministry. We have to figure that out. He said he wants to come to Camp Life Europe and Camp Life. One is not enough for him anymore. So. Uh, I, was, I loved that he came. That was beautiful. Uh, awesome to see him. And uh, we uh, had prayer meetings in the morning, and uh, they're, they're awesome. They're really special for us. And um, a lot of kids coming to him, you know, like a lot of kids, which uh, I just, I always, I'm always a little bit surprised when they show up, you know. But they like it, and they love it. And many, many of them told me, you know, they love the prayer meetings, so. Uh, those are those are maybe like someone said it, the prayer meetings in the morning are like a conference You know, so you know, that's just a beautiful thought for us to know that we have a you know a beautiful worship time in the morning of, with prayer um, The messages past love really has an anointing at camp he preaches and he's got to go. There was one message. I have been, listen, I have been listening to Pastor Law for 40 years. 40 years. Next year it'll be 40 years. I have never seen him do this. Around the campfire, he is preaching and he's talking about Abigail, David's, David's second wife. And he's just telling the story. And he gets the crowd into it 270 teenagers, 87 adults, or not teenagers, but kids. And they're just cheering during this message. I can't even describe it to you, you know. And it's just about, or, or or they're like booing it, you know, booing when it's a bad part of the story. Uh, what, what was Abigail's first husband name? Lay, lay, Label, 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 Nabal, Nabal. I got, it, I got it, Nabal. So he was the bad guy, and the whole crowd is just booing him every time Pastor Love said, you know, and he, his name, you know, his name means stupid, and everyone goes, ah, you know. And then in the end, you know, it's quiet, and he goes, would you believe it? David marries Abigail, and the whole crowd, the whole crowd, 350 people stood up and go, yeah! It was a, a most amazing thing. I thought we were turning Pentecostal. I don't know what was happening. Uh, it was an amazing job of, of preaching and, and getting kids to interact with the story for 20 or 30 minutes, and it, it was just, and then the whole you know, everyone is talking about how, you know, we are Abigails and, you know, just the theme of the message and everyone understands what it means. So he's a gifted man and we're very grateful for him to be there and preach to us. And, uh, and then he, he was the last to leave. Every year he's the last to leave campus, and like the, la the captain of the ship, he's the last to leave. So that's why he's probably not here. I don't think he's here, right? Yeah. So thank God for him. This morning we had a baptism, um, and that was uh, just a beautiful moment. Um, uh, to to Belgium, the Belgium kids that you met um, got baptized, or maybe you didn't meet them, but they were here last week, and uh, 
you know, there's like tears. They're serious, you know. This is a serious moment for them. Like they're, they're ready to show the world that they are saved and they belong to Jesus. And I'm one of them waited because I was with her in Georgia for Camp Life and I was with her in Romania for Camp Life Europe. I was with her in Finland, but she was waiting for Camp Life America. That's where she wanted to get baptized. So I think she was waiting for that. So beautiful, just a beautiful way to end uh, Camp Life. And then um, I'll just share one verse with you quickly. Um, and in Philip, uh, I had this, we had this devotional one morning. Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 7. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts. Um, you know, I was thinking, thinking about it like I've never heard it before. And uh, this idea that there is a peace which is past my own comprehension. I can sense it, maybe, but I cannot describe it uh, because it comes from the mind of God. I know when I have it, but I don't quite know how it all works. It's beyond my mind. Peace that passes understanding. There's this peace, and we can have it. And the second part is that this peace can keep my heart. And that word keep, the um, yeah, best way to maybe to describe it as a word picture would be that it's a garrison of an army around my heart. So uh, I picture I have a heart and it's vulnerable. Uh, it is under attack. It, it, it is uh, prone to all kinds of craziness, but there is also a peace which will protect me uh, from myself and from all kinds of things. But my favorite word in that verse is and, um, because uh, and means that uh, it's a result. It's a result of something. Peace coming to me as a result. And of course, we know what goes before it. Rejoice in the Lord. We did that at camp. We really did. Rejoice in the Lord uh, always. And uh, pray. We did that at camp. And be thankful. We did that at camp. And I have this in my mind that there is 270 kids that have a little tiny garrison around their heart because they did. And I know I do, so I pray that they do. So praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, right? Sorry. Sorry, I forgot. I got to unload the truck after church if you need some exercise. I could use some help. Thank you. I thought he was going to ask for your money. That's my job right now. Okay. Yeah, we're going to pray for the offering right now. So, Lord, we thank you uh, for these things that happen, for these moments uh, when uh, a gang of young people and the staff can really uh, get a visitation from God. And we thank you that those moments happen and that you use uh, people like us, uh, Lord, to to worship and adore you. And uh, we're thankful, Lord, for the hearts that you put in people and for the Holy Spirit that renews us. Lord Jesus, for the new man that you give us, Lord Jesus, thank you for, as we heard this morning, the treatment that you give our souls and the health that you lead us into. Just uh, bless this offering now in your name. Amen. Sin, what you can do. There is 
from the impossible we'll see a miracle god we believe god we believe forever we know that hope is never
you would stand with me for the whole message. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> wow. If you could put up on the screen um, John 1.1. 1, 1. I want to talk about the Bible tonight. Is that okay? Yeah. The Bible. Say the Bible. The, Bible. the, word. the word. The scriptures. Wow. Yea, God is right. Can you get that up there? Okay, there it is. We're going to learn this verse tonight. I know we already know it, but we're going to learn this verse tonight. In the beginning was the word. Say that. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. One more time. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Father, bless our time tonight. Thank you for the Bible, the holy, eternal word of God. Thank you. Your word is forever settled in heaven. Thank you. Thank you for a lamp unto my feet and a light to our path. Thank you for camp life. Thank you that in the youth camp they have the Bible, the preaching of the Bible, morning and afternoons and nights and there's living epistles working in camp life that's what makes it life so we thank you in jesus name amen you may be seated as jemima was singing that song um i was thinking about in genesis chapters one two and three i think it says 25 times and god said or god called that's how it be, that's how the word Genesis 1, 2, and 3, God said, God said, God said, God said, God called, God called, God said, God said, and God said, and God said. And that, that to me was, is remarkable, uh, the importance of God's word. Just a little sidelight illustration before uh, I get to the heart of this message. Um, I don't know if, who was with me, whether it was my wife or someone else uh, in 1996. And there was this man on the other side of the street, and I was watching him because he had a, a certain hat on. And I was just looking at him, and I said, hey, you, come over here. Hey, come, come over here, come up right now, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, it's important. And he crossed the street, it was at Wandagia in Kampala, Uganda. And he crossed the street, and he's just looking at me. And uh, I said, have you ever heard the gospel? And he just was still staring at me. In a strange way. He, had, he was a Ugandan who had actually been to America for eight years. And uh, he was the first person that ever came to the church in Uganda. We had the church in the, listen to what we had the church, and I think you know this before. We had the a church began at the YMCA. I like the YMCA because I was a member and my father was a member. A lot of us were members of the YMCA in Springfield, Mass. So I went there and I said, I'm a lifelong member, give me a room. The guy looked at me and says, who are you? I said, I'm a YMCA. I'm a, I'm a man from the YMCA. So he, he actually gave us a room. I think he gave it to us for free. And so we started the Greater Grace Church. He says, I don't have a room. He says, but if you clean, the, ki the kitchen can be used. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Africa, but it was interesting. Look, amazing Linda. She would clean, the. remember that? Clean the kitchen. And I mean, this kitchen was used for all day long. And she would clean the kitchen, her and a few other people, but her uh, for the most part. And then we would have church service in the kitchen. And it was amazing. Uh, we had seven graduates who were ordained from the kitchen. <laughs> seven people that started Bible school in the kitchen ended up leading in the ministry and are still around. It's, a, it's really incredible. And the importance of, of the scriptures, in the beginning was the word. This speaks of how eternal the word is. The word is eternal. And it's not just black letters on white pages, but absolutely eternal. And it's incredible. I think this week, if I'm not, sometimes my figures are a little bit, you know, too low, or my wife would say often too high. Uh, beyond. But I think we have 3,100 people starting Bible school this week and last week. Wow. Around the world. 3,100 Bible college students. Can you imagine? Say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. And if you, you could be 3,101. 
3102, 3105, whatever it may be. We have 1,150 in Africa alone. 1,150 students are in Bible school in 25 countries because we see the importance of Bible school, and so don't many other people around the world, America, in our ministry, everywhere. But how, how important, how vital is this word? In the beginning is the word. This word is eternal. We base our lives, we base our lives on this word. It's absolutely eternal. And th this is important to understand. There's a lot of things that are gonna be passing away. Did you know that? I mean, you know, I was thinking about that the other day. I think, uh, wow, 75. Where did it, where did this go? Where did the 75 years go? Vapor. Thank you for helping me. It's like a vapor. James 4, 4, gone, you know? And uh, whatnot. And you just think about it. And so all of this, the buildings, the cities, the, 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 the continents and everything, uh, heaven and earth will what? Are you sure it says that? Yep, yep. Yes, it does say that. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word is there forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And I used to pray, God, the word is settled in heaven. Would you please help it to be settled in me? To be settled in me. This is so important, so important, so vital to see that people have a hunger and a desire to learn the word of God. Psalm 19, verse 10, it says, more to be desired than fine gold, yea, than much fine gold, and sweeter than the honeycomb. In the beginning was the what? The word. The word has always been there. There's always been, a, there's, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So not only is the word eternal, but the fellowship in the Trinity was based on the word. Are you with me? The, the fellowship of the Father, the Son, the Father, the Spirit, the Spirit and the Son, and, and, and the Father, all, all, all three of them together, their eternal fellowship was always based on the Word of God, God's Word, God's mind, God's thoughts. You know, many people, I worked in, in an area uh, for many years with people that had drug and alcohol problems and uh, crime problems and uh, in prisons and whatnot, and had homes for people. And there were so many people with their psychologies and their philosophies and how to help an addict recover and really live a stable life. But it never involved, and millions and millions and billions of dollars are spent to rehab people, and they don't understand that they have to change, they have to see people's thinking changed. Amen? I preached a message one time called Everything Outside of God's Word is Stinking Thinking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Remember that? Stinking thinking. No, oh, it's like, and they don't, they don't realize, people don't realize that the only change that can take place, the word repentance is a, sometimes it's a word that people don't like. They have this, this idea, a frame of reference towards that word that maybe signifies something else in their mind that they remember and it didn't come across right or was with the wrong spirit. But repentance merely means changing your what? Changing your mind. Changing your thinking. This is how it begins. So many people are trying to change people's ways. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, therefore my ways are not your what? Ways. Not your ways. It begins with the thought patterns and the thinking. Pastor Stevens used to have this 10-point procedure uh, about uh, how to make a change. It came in 1977 in a uh, class uh, that I, I watched. I don't, it wasn't called, what was it called then? No, it wasn't Bible psychology. Christian psychology. No, I don't even know. It wasn't that. No, it was something else. It was, it was something else. It doesn't matter right now. Let's hold on. Okay? Um, but he talked about a thought coming in. A thought is meditated upon. Uh, it goes in, and we begin to make, we make a decision. An action takes place. The action is logged in the subconscious mind. Then it can be brought out from the subconscious mind to the conscious mind. Another action can take place, which would be followed by a, a series of actions, which would become a pattern and a way of doing things, and then eventually it would become an identity. Mm -hmm. Everybody's identity started with a thought. 
Are you with me? A drug addict started, began, it began with a thought. It began with a thought. Think of the worst sin you can think of. It all began with somebody having a thought and thinking it through and meditating upon it and then making a willful decision which brought in an action, which brought in a series of actions, which brought in a pattern of thinking, which brought them to a certain thing that this is my identity. This is who I am. This is who I am, you know. And I've met people like that, and that's, that's what they this, I can never be anything but this. This is what I am, you know. I've been like this for 30 years. It's not going to change. Changing the thinking. This is where coming to Bible school, for those who have been to Bible school, those who haven't been to Bible school, those who would pray about coming to Bible school, those who would take one class. I don't know. I think we have classes every night, is it, Pastor Steve? Every night? Huh? Not on Wednesday, but every night. You could come and take a, a class and just sit there and begin to say, God, show me how to think. I want to be able to think correctly. All with thinking. How is it that I can have a marriage? I need to have God's mind on marriage. How is it that I can raise a family? I need God's mind on raising a family. How is it that I can be at my job and be a witness for Christ? I need God's mind for my job. I need God's mind for my neighborhood. I, meet, I need God's mind in the sports activities that we have, whether we're younger or older. We need God's mind. That's why it was very simply said in Philippians chapter 2. And by the way, in the book of Philippians, the word joy is used 19 times, and the word mind or understanding is used 17 times. Put them together. You have God's mind, you're going to have joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you here tonight? Yep. Come on now. Come on, I know. Uh, can't, Pastor, Pastor Pete Wistera, are you, are you tired? No, you're not tired. Quickened by God. Amen. In the beginning was the word. I need God's mind. I need God's mind every day. It's not something that, well, I've been to Bible school and I've been in the ministry since 1976. And you know what? Uh, I need God's mind. I need God's mind day and night, night and day. In his doctrine, I shall meditate what? Day. day what is that? Day. Oh, really? Does it really say that? Hmm? My meditation in Psalm 1914. So thinking with God. We've heard that so many times. There's books by Dr. Stevens written on how to think with God. And if my mind is, is in God, and my mind is God's thoughts and God's minds, then there's a great possibility, uh, probability, that my decisions will be based upon how God thinks. Amen? Amen? How God thinks. My decisions about how to handle money will be based on how God thinks. My decisions on how to operate in a situation that's maybe tense or a problem or something going on at work, I'll have God's mind. I remember one time seven people took me to court. Okay? It was in an African country. And they tried to get me deported. Why would they want to do that? Such a nice person. Why would, why would they want to do that? That doesn't, what, what, what did I do? I, I don't know what I did. I aggravated them because all I ever talked about, see, they, they said, okay, you came to this ministry and, and, and we followed and it was all about the Bible, but that we, you never brought any large amounts of food, clothing, medical supplies, doctors and all that. And I did my best to see what I could get and we did have some of that happen. But after three or four years, they decided that they didn't want this. They wanted these other things that pass away. And so they took me to court. And I was thinking about, what do I do with this situation? Uh, okay, I have a tendency, I can get angry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can get a little bit angry sometimes, whether it's in the flesh or in the spirit, even sometimes, you know, righteous indignation. So I went to court, and they were there. And God said to me, not with this audible voice, but just from the heart, Go up and shake all of their hands in front of the judge and, and tell them, thank you for helping me to grow. So I did it. Shook their hands and I want to thank you for helping me to grow as a believer. The judge said, he's free, dismissed. Case dismissed against him. No problem at all. I says, no. Why? Because I want to think with God. We can get ourselves into things that take place every single day in life. And God says, 
I want to bring in my thinking. I went outside after church, and there was a little thing in my car. Somebody hit my car door. Why? I'm never going to that church again. That's not thinking with God. Park way out there or something, you know? If it's that bad, you could use the exercise maybe, you know? There's nothing wrong, you know? But thinking with God, these things are going to take place, all right? Every time I got on a bus that Jerry Roberts was driving, Pastor Jerry Roberts, I had to really think with God. Because he drives, he, he, he drove, I don't know about now, but he drove like a maniac. And I'm thinking to myself, he's scaring the death out of me. I mean, he's... Ah, if your wife's here, I'm sorry. I should have never... Yeah, forgive me. Will you... For... We... She agrees. I was like, you got to be kidding. And next to him was Kathy Ryan. She's not here tonight, is she? Oh, okay. The two of you must have friendship. <laughs> Scary. Remember the bus in New York? Going through the tunnels, and you're like an inch from the side of the tunnel. And I'm going, we're not going to get to evangelize in New York. We're going to die. Huh? Yeah. But if you're thinking with God, Right? Perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed on thee. Have you ever been in a situation where you don't have peace? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a guy put a gun to my head one time. He said, stop preaching. I'm like, the sweat was coming down the sides of my, my uh, under my shirt. It was, it was fearful. I was standing there like, God, you better give me something to say. because I don't like this idea at all, what this guy's doing. Okay. And I said, let me ask you, can I, before you pull the trigger, could I ask you a question? He's looking at me like, what are you, nuts? Ask, you want to ask me a question? I said, yeah, why would you want to go to jail for the rest of your life for sending me to heaven? I said, does that make any sense? He said, no, it doesn't. He said, really? I said, yeah, you're, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, you kill me, I'm going to heaven, you're going to go to jail for sending me to heaven. That's a bad deal. Put the gun in his pocket and walked away, you know. <laughs> Whew. I mean, let me tell you something. I was sweating and living in intense fear. But the mouth worked. The mouth worked. The mind of God. See, the mind, then there's the thoughts, and then come the words and the ways. Amen? So I want to think with God. How can I think with God? I need to, I need to think about the importance of this word. Amen? Yes. That this word... Is so key to my life. I need this word. I need the mind of God in me. And it's step by step. Don't be intimidated. Even if you start with five minutes of Bible reading a day, it's better than no minutes a day. Hello? And then it gradually, it works up. And I begin to think with God. And not just black letters on white pages, but I allow the Holy Spirit who wrote the word. And isn't it amazing? The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. And the Holy Spirit lives in me because I'm born of the Spirit. How would the two like to get together? Wouldn't that be great? Isn't that a great marriage? The Spirit that wrote the Bible and the Spirit in me getting together, right? Yea, God is right. So that I am, I am living and receiving from God's mind. Receive with meekness the implanted and grafted word which can deliver your soul. We're saved, we're born again if we are, but my soul needs to be delivered every single day. The soul is the mind, the emotions, the conscience, right? The, the, the self-image, the will. I need to be delivered on a daily basis. Hello? I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I've been a Christian for 50 years. Uh, what do you mean delivered? I don't need deliverance. I've been delivered and I'm doing uh, Really? Right away, there's a problem. Right away, there's a problem. So I, I started off the story with Jemima, and I forgot all about it. And uh, he was walking, and I yelled to him. He came to church. He got saved. He came to church, went to Bible school. He was our first Bible college student. And that was amazing, sitting in a kitchen uh, and having Bible college class in the kitchen and then watching these men graduate. And Jemima is a result of that man coming to the ministry. Am I right? Am I right? Come on. I need a witness. Am I right? Thank you. That's amazing. And, and the word of God. 
And we've had this, we've had this word. Our ministry has been so elevated in the word of God through Pastor Stevens and Pastor Schaller and men of God and Pastor Love on Grace Sour and, and all these men that are around the world preaching the Bible. Wow, 3,000 students starting Bible school within the last two weeks. Isn't that amazing? 3,000 people letting God's mind be developed in them. And yes, it comes through preaching. Yes, it comes through church services. That's why coming to church three times a week, even four, twice on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, or whatever, coming to church, it's an opportunity for me to have God's mind develop in me because my mind is corrupt outside of God. The old sin nature has a mind, and even when you think it's good, it's not. Hello. It's not. It's not good. Because it's not God. It's not God. I need God's thoughts. I need God's mind. Working in a prison, you would find people in there, oh, un incredible people that were sent. By the way, when you're sentenced to uh, life imprisonment for murder, like where we came from up in Massachusetts, there is no death penalty. So to kill somebody else in jail is no big deal. Your sentence doesn't become any longer. But how to give them God's mind? How to give people God's mind. I'm, I'm dealing with a person right now uh, that I've known for 40 years and just trying to give them God's thoughts through communication by telephone. The mind of God. That's why we have messages. That's why we have grace hour. That's why we have Bible school. That's why we send missionaries in all the world. Are well, we sending missionaries to get a cultural Chinese experience? Or to look, did you come here to learn the culture of Africa? I don't know anything about culture. I never even learned one word of any African language. I don't have time. I only have time to learn the Bible and preach the Bible and teach the Bible. And it's amazing to me when I hear some of these men preaching and teaching in 20, 10, 20, 30 years, and they've been doing it, and I see the results of what's taking place. It's phenomenal. Can you imagine, we have, I think, 11 churches in China. Hello? I know, maybe they're not supposed to say that. Asia, sorry. Asia, it's incredible. We just planted our 11th church this weekend in, uh, in Kinshasa, Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo. I was talking to the pastor uh, today and yesterday, and he's so excited. A brand new church, a new church in the Congo. And that's an intense jungle area. It's a village church. In the villages, they need to learn the Bible. Amen? Amen. In the, in, 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 where there's poor people, rich people, wherever they are, they need, it's the Bible. We have a living word to give to people. This is what it said. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Actually, the, how the Greek language reads is, in the eternal beginning was the word, or is the word, and the word was facing God. And then the third part of that verse says the word absolutely is God. Now he was like it's past tense and now he's become a song. Or something else. A hymn. You know, or whatever. Absolutely the word is God. And oh God, give me a desire for your, your mind, your thoughts, your word. You say, I don't have it. That's okay. How about asking God for it? <clears throat> Hello? Is there any response here? Yes. Uh, yeah, is it yes, God? G give me, give me a, I don't have a desire. I don't even want to read your Bible. How about, okay, that's true. Give me a desire for the word God. Help me, change me, motivate me. I want to know the word. I want to learn the word. We have a Christian school. I hope, and I know they're learning the word. I shouldn't say I hope. Sorry, Pastor Barry. That was a mistake. They're learning the Bible, right? They have Bible every day, don't they? First thing in the morning, right? Bible, 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 Word of God, living Word of God, life, where young people, in, in, whether in uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, they're, they learn to think with God. And they can e actually even go home and maybe uh, where their, a parent isn't thinking with God, they can say, that's not what God would do, Mom. That's not what God would do, Dad. That's not the right thing. Thinking with God. How to think. Because from my thinking comes my ways, comes my decisions, my thinking, my thoughts, my decisions, and then the actions, and then I develop these certain ways. And the ways, if they're not of God, I've got to just go back and change my what? Thinking. Thinking with God. 
This is so key, and you know this. I'm, not, I'm talking to the choir, you know? It's like talking to the choir about singing when I can't sing a tune, you know? You know this, how to think with God. But it's so easy, because what, what is the devil's objective according to what Jesus said? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now watch. Steal the word, kill off the influence of the Holy Spirit, and destroy fruit. Steal, kill, destroy. If he gets, if he gets, Christianity today, for much of it, sad to say this, I know this in Africa, it's wordless. I went to a church one time and the man says, our service is three and a half hours. I'm like, huh? 8.30 to 12. He said, you're the main preacher. I said, okay, great. He said, you got 20 minutes. I'm thinking to myself, what in God's name are they doing for three and a half hours and there's 20 minutes of the Bible? What's happened here? This was in Nigeria, sorry to say. I can't believe it. I, I would go places and there's really no emphasis on the scripture. And they are born again. They are saved. But it's kind of like, I don't know, something's been taken. Remember what Jesus said to Martha? Martha, Martha, you are troubled and cumbered about with so many things. Serving God. She was serving God. He says, only one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen the best part, which shall not be taken from her. What was Mary, what did Mary choose? Sitting at his feet and doing what? Hearing the word, Martha, Martha. You are, you are having an anxiety attack. The word therbazo is you. You're an emotional wreck. Tell her to help me! She's not helping me. Jesus, tell her to help me. She's trying to direct God. It's like, Martha, Martha. I love you, know, I love you Martha, but why don't you understand? You are so careful and troubled. You're an emotional wreck. You're living in anxiety, and you're an emotional wreck. Why don't you look at what your sister's doing? She's very calm and at peace sitting there listening to the word. Listening to Jesus speak. And this is the key. I want to hear God speak. Amen? Are you with me? I want to hear God speak. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And absolutely is God. I want to hear God speak. As we get on in age, I want to hear God speak to the day I go home to be with the Lord. I want to learn the Bible. Learn the Bible. Continue to learn the Bible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Learning the Bible. Paul still was learning the Bible in jail after being an apostle for 30 years. He still wanted to learn the Bible. Learn the scriptures. We can't out, you know, somehow out. We don't need them anymore. We don't need them anymore. I've I've outgrown the scriptures. I've outgrown them, you know. I, I know that already. I went to Bible school. Really? That's nice. Still read the Bible? Once in a while. Oh, okay. So you have a once in a while mind thought, once in a while, once in a while Christianity. God help me to have a hunger for the scriptures. Help me. I'm at home. I'm raising children. I can look at the Bible. I can get something in the morning to take me through the day. A word from God. God's word, heavenly word. I need the word. I, I, won't, I, I won't stop saying this. I can't say it enough. God, give me a hunger. I love what Jeremiah said in closing. I did find your word, and I ate it. And it was a joy and rejoicing to my heart because I'm called by your name. But you know what he said in the beginning before he even started that? I'm alone. Everybody was against him, but the word was for him. Amen. Have you ever had situations where people are against you? Hello. The word is for you. God is for you, and God is the word, and God is for you, and the word is for you. Don't read the, let, don't read the Bible and let it condemn you. Don't read it through, with a legalistic mindset. Don't read it uh, and it's killing you. The word gives life. The word is a word of grace. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Paul says, my last words to you is the word of grace. You're never going to see, you're never going to see my face again. But don't weep. Put your face in the Bible. The scriptures. Because they're not going away. 
Hallelujah. They're, they're here forever. What are we going to do in heaven? Learn the Bible. We're going to learn that. We're going to grow in, in, in getting to know God. We're going to learn the word in a brand new way, without a sin nature, without the devil, and without this world. So, Father, thank you today. We pray, help us, God, to be a people. Adonai and Justin, before I pray, this last story coming to me, Adonai and Justin went to Burma, and he had to watch people, how the tones they spoke with and what came out of their mouth, and he had to create a language in Burma. It took him 30 years. He made the Burmese language, then he translated the Bible into the Burmese language. It took 30 to 35 years to do that. Can you imagine? And two million born-again born Burmese came from that Bible translation. Hello? Burma didn't have a Bible, and he said, I'm going to translate it. I'm going to make a language, and I'm going to make a Bible, and people are going to get saved. And he had those manuscripts with him when they put him in prison for many years. He would put them in his pillow and sleep on them. And they didn't know, if they had found them, they would have gotten rid of them. But Judson's Bible today is the only Bible in Burma to this day. That's the word. So Father, help us, God, to have a hunger and a desire for the truth, for the truth, for the word, for the Bible. Thank you that the Bible still speaks. We pray if there's anyone here tonight that's never received Christ as their Savior, here in the audience or on the internet, Jesus, save me. The Bible says you must be born again. Not you might or should or could, but not maybe, but you must be. So say, Jesus, save me tonight. Salvation is a free gift, Ephesians 2, 5, and 8. Born of the Spirit, saved by grace, born of the Word. Thank you tonight. Thank you for your Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, facing God, fellowshipping with God. And the Word was God. Absolutely is God. We thank you tonight. Help us, God. I don't care who we are, where we are in our Christianity. Maybe it's day one or maybe it's, it's uh, you know, year 45. I need the word. I desire the word. I want the word. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. In the beginning was the word. And the word was. And the word. Amen. Let's all stand. Exposing all our 
Yes, the word of God is spoken. We are changed forever. The power of sin is broken. We are free. We are running to salvation. We have been delivered. The word of God is spoken. We are free. Oh, the word of God is spoken. We are changed forever. The power of sin is broken. We are free. We are running to salvation. We have been delivered. The word of God is spoken. mic on okay all right could you put up one verse for me acts 17 verse 11 just as we close acts 17 11 these were more noble than those in thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind they were they were searching it out they heard the preaching they had to make sure, is it true? Is it true? You have to make sure, is your Bible true? How are you going to know? Is your Bible true? They had to search it out. They had to prove it. Do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. Uh, are you sure about that? Why do people leave the faith? Why did they become a Jehovah Witness after being a Baptist? Why does, why does somebody say, I don't believe that anymore? I used to go to greater grace, but I don't believe that anymore. Why? What happened to them? Why did they change? But these people, when they heard the Bible, they had to get serious about it. They received the word with all readiness of mind. I am serious about this. If this is true, I'm going to build my life on it and make big decisions based on it. I better be sure it's true. What about it? Turn to your neighbor and just say, do you have intellectual integrity? Or are you just following other people? Do you have intellectual integrity? Are you going to search it out? Or are you just following the crowd? Whatever crowd you are with, what's a chameleon? What is a chameleon? He changes his color based on the environment. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm with the Christian people. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Have you thought about it? Have you challenged it? Okay, we're almost done. Next part. They searched it out with, with a readiness of mind and searched the scriptures. How much? Daily, they were in the book asking questions, trying to figure it out. Is it true or not? Is it true or not? Huh? What do you think? Well, you, you know, what do you think? Is it true or not? Right? Isn't that good? Hey, come on. I, I, if I'm going to be serious about it, it better work. It better be true, because I'm basing my life on it. I'm not wasting my life. I'm, build, I'm basing my life on it. So what do you think? Maybe you have to study it, figure it out, whether those things were so. So, Pastor, thank you for the word. Thank you for all the people, the, the body and the prayer. I'm very excited about it. I believe in what we're doing. Guys, uh, I've tested it, I've proven it, I've thought about it, and we have a very good staff. I wonder if we could put up that count, that schedule, Pastor Steve, is this it? Okay, is it go up on the screen? If I put it here, <laughs> does it go up there? Let's throw it up there. There it goes, I just threw it up there. 
So that's the calendar. There are three morning classes, uh, Wednesday morning, Thursday, Friday, 8.30 to 10, 20, and then the evening classes, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, amen. Good to see you tonight. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome group of people. Uh, and um, that's all. All right, in Jesus' name, go. Go in Jesus' name. And may God bless you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you and bless you all week long. And see you Wednesday night. Pastor Tom, good to see you from Virginia. Thanks for being here tonight. There'll be a rap, Pastor. Pastor Chabelli's available to do a rap. Uh, where do you want to do it? In here, in the cafe, or outside, or right here? Okay. How about the couches, or you want the hard? Or hard? Okay. Yeah. Hard, hard, he, maybe. So that'll be in 20 minutes. Thank you. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>